Hello everyone, it's Phil here from One to One IELTS. And in today's video lesson, we're going to learn how to write topic sentences for multiple cause and multiple solution style essays. For these types of topic sentences, the grammatical structures are a little bit different to what you're used to for the other types of essay. However, they still fit into the four part structure and once we know them, it's very, very easy to make sure that our topic sentences are grammatically correct. So we will be having a look at writing a couple of courses, a couple of solutions with my students from a lesson that I recorded earlier today. Hello everyone and welcome to today's class. Uh, we are going to be looking at how to write topic sentences for our IELTS writing task two causes and solutions style essay with multiple ideas. So that means we're gonna have more than one idea in both of our body paragraphs and we're gonna see how we go about doing that. The purpose of writing these topic sentences is to introduce an idea that you're going to talk about in the paragraph. It's really important that you show you are directly answering the question. So in this question, it is a causes and solution question. You could also have a problems and solutions essay but in both of them, it's really important that you show in the first body paragraph, you're talking about causes or that you're talking about problems. And in the solutions paragraph that you're talking about solutions, do not infer anything. A lot of students, I think they write their topic sentence that they hope the examiner will infer the meaning, but you need to directly state you are giving a cause or a solution. Really, really important. Every one of the essay structures is gonna be a little bit different, but we can basically answer these questions and create topic sentences using a four-part structure that we're going to look at in today's lesson. So the question that we started last week and we generated some ideas for was this cause and solution. In many countries, crime rates amongst young people have been rising. How many causes do we need to give for a question like this? Two, exactly. So we see here it says causes, there is an S on here. That indicates to us that we must give more than one cause. What happens if we only give one cause? Task response, yeah, will only be a band five. Even if everything else is really good, if you're only talking about one cause, and in this question, it talks about multiple solutions, we have to give two causes, two solutions. If we don't do that, you're not getting over a band five for your task response. So it's really, really important to analyze the question. For causes and solutions questions and for problems and solutions questions, sometimes you will have two causes, two problems, one solution. Sometimes you'll have one cause, one problem or multiple solutions. So you've really got to make sure before you start that you're very sure of how many causes, how many solutions we're talking about. The very first thing we need to do is indicate that we're talking about a cause. Paragraph one, we've got two causes. So topic sentence one, how can we indicate we are talking about a cause? How do we indicate it's one cause of multiple causes? The language to indicate we're talking about causes, we can talk about reasons, or we can use the exact word cause. Which one of these three expressions do we not want to use in a multiple cause essay? <laughs> to our mind, why? Why is this third one not as good? Because it indicates we're only talking about one. So it is possible, you know, it's not the end of the world to use this, but these indicate that you've got two causes or reasons that are of fairly equal strength. If we're writing this, it's showing, okay, this is the main cause, and then the, there is another cause, but it's not a very important cause. So it's not terrible, but I would say that these are a lot a uh, much better way of approaching one of these questions. So one of the, or one of the causes, one of the reasons, because it already indicates to the examiner that you are aware that you need to write more than one reason or more than one cause. Again, it just puts the examiner in a good frame of mind. What comes next? Am I gonna write this? So remember, this is the first topic sentence. Would it be all right for me to write one of the reasons for this, one of the causes of this? Now, at the beginning, it's a little bit too vague. For our second 
topic sentence. I feel this is absolutely it, fine, because we've already mentioned what the cause or reason is about. We're only going to use this in the second topic sentence of the paragraph. In the first topic sentence, we're going to uh, mention what the reason is for or the causes of. So maybe, yeah, we could mention, I think, for this rising crime or for me, this is probably sufficient. One of the reasons for these rising crime rates. Now, this is referring back to our first, our introduction. It's just a little bit more specific. And let's have a look at the next one. One of the causes, of, one of the causes of, the one of the causes of these rising crime rates, or I can maybe say one of the causes of, again, what are we looking at here? Are we looking at noun phrases or are we looking at clauses? This is actually a noun phrase. But at the moment, both of these expressions are looking like we've got noun phrases. That's our first part. This is our second part. What is the third part that we need for our topic sentence? So we've now very clearly signposted what type of question. We've also very clearly shown what we're referring to. So we could definitely use is that. Is, is okay on its own? Yep. If we use is that, what type of grammatical structure is coming after it? Is it going to be a clause or a noun phrase? This is that is always followed by a clause. If I have is, what follows it? So we can have a noun phrase. Is it possible to follow it with a clause? Yeah. So both here are possible. So if you're going to use is that, you're only going to use a clause. If you're going to use is, you have the option. You could use a noun phrase or you could use a clause. So this is our third part. This is basically our joining words. And then I'm going to throw this over to my students. So the main idea that we generated last time was talking about no employment. How would you use one of these expressions to create a topic sentence for this paragraph? So we have our first sentence from Nabila. One of the reasons for, so we could using this first structure, these rising crime rates, fine. We've got a noun phrase. Is that okay? We know we're going to follow this with a clause. So we need subject, verb, object. Young people are unemployed. Excellent. Very, very clear. Grammatically correct. One of the reasons for these rising crime rates is that there is a lack of employment amongst youngsters. Can anyone tell me what is wrong with this sentence? A lack. There is a vocabulary word that we are never allowed to use in this sentence. And Mary says, youngsters, yeah, two reasons. Number one, we can't use the word youngster because it's incredibly informal. So in no part of your writing are you ever going to use the word youngster. The second problem with this, what does youngster refer to? Is it young adults or young children? Young children. So as this question is not referring to young children, um, so what could we have? Younger people, young adults, I think we work, the youth, okay, that would also work in this instance. Uh, young adults, I think, would be also fine here. How about generation? How could I refer to a generation? Young people, young adults, the younger generation, these, for me, are the most typical synonyms we're going to be using this in this context. Okay, but apart from that, the sentence of the structure of the sentence is really good, so well done. Cause number two. So our second reason that crime rates amongst younger people have been rising is they are influenced by TV. So this time we've already referred to what these reasons are for. So we can replace this with what word can replace this now phrase in blue? This exactly. And instead of writing one of the reasons for this, because it's the second reason, what can we use to indicate that this is our second reason? Another reason for this is what we're referring to. Our joining word is is. And what type of expression comes after this? I would put a clause. I think a clause is going to indicate our idea just in a more, uh, in a fuller way. If we write in noun phrases here, it just ends up being a bit abrupt. So I would recommend putting a clause after this, just to make sure that your ideas come across as clear and well-developed. Uh, Mary said, is that, yeah, that also works. How are we going to introduce this idea? So another reason is that 
Again, this would also work, so we just get rid of for this. Another reason is that the young generation, when we refer to generations, we like to put in this comparative, the, the younger rather than the young. So very clear, here we've just skipped the this, which also works, and then we've just turned this into a three-part structure. Okay, let's go back to some other questions. Another reason for this is that, I must admit, when I do read this, it reads a lot better, including this with this in there. I know it's a really minor thing, but it does just read a little bit better, and it just seems a little bit fuller than just good jumping the this. Another reason for this is that TV series influences a lot of its younger generation. TV series, is there one or many? Many. So influences doesn't work here. TV series, because this is plural, influence a lot of, I guess we could say a lot of the younger generation. So whenever we're referring to younger generation, we do want this article because it's referring to the specific younger generation. Apart from that, I think this works really well. Another reason for this is that TV series influence a lot of the younger generation. Another reason is some television programs negatively influence the young population. The young population is an awkward expression. I would avoid using this. Simply the younger generation. Talking about people of different ages is one of the most common areas that I see students make mistakes with, with forcing synonyms. Younger people, the younger generation, young adults in this instance. I would stick to those three expressions. It is sufficient to just mix between those three. You're not repeating yourself a lot, and it's much better than using expressions that you're not sure of. This is going for this three-part structure. As I mentioned before, I do like this for this. It is a personal thing, but I think it just makes the sentence seem a little bit more complete. So another reason is that some television programs negatively influence the younger generation. Apart from that, absolutely fine. So our solution for number one is improve education. So we want to indicate that we're giving a solution and it's the first of a couple of solutions. So how do we do that? I think this is absolutely fine. We've mentioned already enough. Uh, we could use, yeah, instead of issue, problem, so one of the solutions to this issue, one of the solutions for this issue or problem is um, what's going to come after this completely different structure. I'm going to say use for here. So one of the solutions for this issue or problem is to, <laughs> what comes after to? The Mara says verb, exactly, the verb and object. So one of the solutions for this issue, problem, solutions are always basically an action and verbs are actions. Mary said, can we start with gerunds? No, you want to start with verbs. So one of the solutions for this problem is to, and what type of verb? Infinitive, exactly. So try using this structure to give our solutions. Can we say to tackle this problem? Yep, yeah. one of the solutions. To... This is definitely fine, but you would still want to use this is to expression. So this part's good, this part's fine. What's wrong here? What did we say we do not want to do? Yeah, we don't want to use gerunds. So we're using two plus the infinitive. Follow the structure. So one of the solutions for this problem is to provide, and then you're gonna have your object, provide education to younger people or to educate uh, younger people. Uh, which ones are better? They're both fine. Now we have the structure and you know you're grammatically correct. Are there other ways to write topic sentences without following this exact structure? Yes. But if you follow this structure, you know your grammar's right. Making your life a lot easier, it's like, okay, is to, you don't have to think of a gerundi or phrases or anything, it's like, okay, is to, verb, infinitive, and then object. So one of, remember, one of the solutions, so we always want the article here, so one of the solutions for this problem is to improve education among the younger adults. We don't know which younger adults, so we can just talk about them in general. One of the solutions to tackle this problem is to provide education to the youth. Good job, this works. One of the solutions to tackle this problem is to educate young people. Excellent. So you see how we're, we're basically just filling in a formula. <laughs> if you follow this formula, everything works well. The final one is our second solution is heavy punishments for young offenders. 
So very similar, we're going to be looking at solution two is we need to show it another solution. So we could either say a second solution or another solution. So here we could change our language a little bit. So another solution. And we're going to be following again with the solutions. We have this plus verb plus object. Uh, Mary says another approach to tackle this problem. Yep, that would also work. Another approach to tackle this problem. But same thing here is two uh, plus object. And remember, you don't need to memorize huge amounts of these. We've only got to give two solutions. You can talk about a solution, an approach, uh, solutions to tackle. That also works. Choose two. Maximum you need, are ever going to need an essay is two. There's no need to go learning hundreds of uh, different ways of talking about solutions. Find two and stick to that. How are we going to use this structure to deal with this idea? Heavy punishments for young offenders. Okay, another solution for this issue is to punish those young offenders severely. So we don't actually know who the offenders are yet. So this is referring to offenders that we've already mentioned. So we're only using these demonstrative pronouns when we actually know who they are. So it's being a bit too specific at the moment. So simply another solution for this issue is to punish young offenders severely. Another solution to address this issue is to punish young offenders with heavy fines. Excellent. Another approach to tackle this problem is to implement tight punishment for young offenders. Tight punishment is not a collocation. We could use harsh punishments. You're talking about punishments in general, so we'd use the plural here. So another approach to tackle this problem is to implement harsh punishments for young offenders. So again, don't take risks with your collocations. Make sure you're using collocations that you have seen native speakers using. So I hope you can use that in your essays. Good luck to you all in your studies, and I hope you're having a great week.